what looks like this unassuming Amazon Prime shipping box actually contains much more than just that. It is my child. Look at that double barreled boy. That is that is two guns glued together. <laughs> this guy doesn't have a gun. Yep, found it. There you go, buddy. Now you're armed and dangerous. A little bit. This leader model here? Oh man. That's so cool. That's so cool to see. That I wasn't totally hopeless. Even back in the day. <laughs> Alright. Next up we got the Tyranids, which I think are represented in these three bags. Plus maybe, uh, there might be some of them in the junk over there. <laughs> But let's take a look here. Because my Tyranids were probably my biggest army outside of Space Marines. As you'll see shortly, <laughs> there is, there's some, some oofs. There's some oofs to be had for sure. I did have Gargoyles. They were playable at one point. I don't know how playable, but I had them. So <laughs> a lot of this is unpainted too still, which is wild to me but also I was a kid like it makes a lot of sense <laughs> we got we're building up a bit of a shame pile here that I didn't even realize I had <laughs> you can see absolutely terrible job on the painting I don't even think I put primer on these guys I believe that's an adrenal gland uh, but yeah this is this is rough this is, this is rough looking at this here uh, we got some termagants with devourers here which are apparently good again. <laughs> again, I think zero primer applied to these models and kind of barely painted. I do like the effect that this uneven green painting got on their skin tone here though. It looks very organic and cool, even though I'm pretty sure it wasn't intentional at all. Here's the one I spend a bunch of time on. You can even see I tried to add some contouring to the armor plate there and I think well well intentioned it didn't really turn out as well as it could have <laughs> this model over here is a really interesting one so uh, you can see by his tail that he is, this, we got some mechanical bits here his armor is painted silver uh, like metallic and uh, I replaced one of his scything talons with a chain sword uh this was i now as i now understand an extremely heretical piece of biotech uh taken by the ultramarines there's an armor place in his chest here i think i was going to replace his head with something else i don't remember what it would have been but the idea was to take like this shell of a tiered and repurpose it to fight alongside space marines even though it wouldn't actually make sense in the lore like at all but I thought it was sick, and I still kind of think it's sick. <laughs> and like, uh, we got portions of a biovor here that uh, has been assembled I, at one point, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, pewter is going to fall apart. We have portions of a lictor as well, which I heard are good again now. So, you know, poggy. I think we got like 10 mines to go with the biovor. And there's so much pewter in this army, man. The gargoyle is pewter, too. I didn't actually glue in his arms, but it looks like it doesn't matter that much. Termagant with wings. Who would have thought? And then, all right, this last bag, I didn't unbox it yet because it's a little bit more significant. Uh, these figures belong to a childhood friend of mine. But it's gone on to make music professionally and is known as Grizz. Check him out if you haven't heard of him. He makes dope sounds. And this is now proof of my close personal friendship with him <laughs> back in the day. Physical evidence of knowing Grizz. Check out the base. We got that Easter basket grass base. Grizz was a, he was a resourceful kid, you know, that's some creativity right there. But I traded for, I think I traded my elder stuff for these gene stealers. But that's my spread of Tyranids minus, I think, a couple of parts. Uh, that we'll find in the upcoming miscellaneous bags. So let's uh, get to those next. This is the part that I think I'm maybe most excited for. Uh, because I have no idea what's in these bags. Uh, right off the bat, this just looks like a couple of spare bits. In this bag though, I honestly have no idea what's going to come out of it. Right off the bat, 
we got a treat. That one's going to take some talking about for sure. Okay, alright. We got some good stuff in this one. We got some treats in here. I thought, I thought it was a hive card, but it might be called something else now. Or it might not exist. Or maybe Hiveguard have a melee configuration. Uh, and I think this is that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. If you know, if you know who this is, uh, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Cause I've honestly forgotten. And I know that today Hiveguard have guns. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure who that boy is. Uh, we got another gargoyle here, fully painted in a very bizarre, tone i think green and yellow are my gun boys but he's got blue because he's fast attack and and blue meant they were fast i guess i don't know that i'm not gonna justify it myself i was talking about the tyranid warrior that had modifications he had the chain sword he had the, the thing on his tail he had like the plate on his belly this was the guy who was gonna tame that Tyranid Warrior, and I modified him with a whip made out of, I believe, a gardening fabric. So he had a whip, he was going to have some kind of, like, shield here, uh, and he was going to act as, like, the lion tamer with some sort of, sort of, like, electro whip or something. And then this little gaunt right here, modified with, I think, legit Play-Doh. <laughs> had some bolters uh, grafted onto his shoulders and he was part of that as well. We got what looks like an incomplete war boss of some kind here. Maybe a mech suit, a big mech. This guy right here, I'm fairly certain is my brother's model. Maybe one that I painted. It's not taking focus, but this it's really hard to glean anything out of, it, out of this model if it was in focus. It's pretty jank. There we go. Yeah, that looks like a Chaos Boy to me. Uh, I don't know what model he belongs to. But we got a horse. This was bought pre-painted from our hobby shop. Uh, this is from a, a game that Games Workshop used to make called Inquisitor, which used much larger models. But Inquisitor was a really cool game where you only had a couple of miniatures, like, I think it was like three to five guys, and it was much more like an RPG. Like, they had stats and could, like, level up and get abilities and stuff like that. Anyway, it was a really cool game. Uh, much like Fantasy that I wanted to get everybody to get into and get uh, start playing. And then found no one to play with. <laughs> so I had this one dude. My dad got that for me as a birthday gift uh, from the hobby shop. And it was, he's pre-painted, so he looks, like, quite nice. Quite well painted. Um, but, yeah, never saw any actual play. I think quite a valuable miniature now, possibly because that game is no longer in print and the miniatures are no longer being manufactured. I saved the best for last. We got the Space Greens next and I'm really hyped to show them off because uh, they are kind of my pride and joy. They're the thing I remember most about the hobby and I don't even know if they're any good or not. <laughs> so let's take a look and see what we can scrounge up. All right. You can tell that these are the important ones because they have their own box. <laughs> so let's crack this thing open. Uh, just going from the top left, we have a dreadnought weapon and an arm. <laughs> a lot of we're gonna see a lot of flagpoles. Uh, standards were huge back in the day, uh, so we had plenty of those. And here are my scouts. This is the full spread of my Ultramarines army. Uh, and it doesn't look like 2,000 points, I know. <laughs> I've reassembled it the best I could to the best of my knowledge. There's definitely gaps and places that I just straight up don't remember what I had, where I put it, anything like that, who knows. But it looks like we got three squads of tactical marines with one person missing in action for some reason seven scouts uh, we got a squad of bikes here uh, some devastator marines I'm kind of blocking right there uh, we got a dr 
dreadnought in the back, and we have a librarian, uh, a chaplain in Terminator armor, another uh, kitbash chaplain that I made myself, a Vindicare assassin, and the big bad boy himself, Marnius Calgar. I'm gonna start with him. This guy, back in the day, was one of the baddest dudes you could get for the Space Marines arm. Like, clearly not painted by me. <laughs> this was 100% done by my, my dad. You can tell he even, he even painted the teeth. I'm not sure if it'll be in focus. There we go. Yeah, he even got the teeth in there. That's a real dedication. Actually, like, quite a nice paint job. This was before we had knowledge of anything like washes or anything like that. So this is just done with pure base coating. A little bit of elbow grease and a lot of love, I think. Definitely the centerpiece of my army. I think he was like 500 points by himself. <laughs> Which is why this army somehow made it to 2,000 points. The double power fist with bolters under each one. It's such a cool model. You see this guy across the table, you get scared. The scouts had camo shoulder pads. And this is where I got into like weathering or my I, my con conception of weathering at the time. I actually really love how this mod effect turned out. I think it still looks like quite good for the, the technologies that we were using at the time. Got the face paint on. Uh, I mean, some of it appears to be strictly unpainted. <laughs> so I'm not really sure how that happened. Be these leather pouches in the back. Straight up, straight up just ignored. A lot of attention put into the rest of the model. But not those. <laughs> I think I tried to do some hazard stripes on this pistol. That looks like it's an attempt at hazard stripes, but I can't quite tell. And again, it looks like I just straight up ignored some parts of the model. Uh, these tactical marines, which look fantastic, were not painted by me. These were 100% done with by my dad. Uh, even the eyes were done pretty well, but the shoulder pads looking all nice and crisp. I love the metal color on the backpack. It's sort of this like rose gold bronze. Anything you see here with nice shoulder pads was 100% done by my dad. <laughs> B.O.B. Bob. This is Space Marine Bob. It's painted three times on, on the figure, including the bay. Oh, four times. We got it. We got it on his leg here. Bob. I don't know why he's Bob, but he is and he will remain. So, so before Kill Team was a thing, I was trying to homebrew a sort of like deathmatch style game where you had like a small amount of miniatures. There was something called City Fight back in the day. It existed, but I don't think anyone played it. <laughs> so I was trying to homebrew a more like narrative small size thing. I think it was called like Deathmatch or something. So he has a D on his shoulder pad because he was part of the Deathmatch squad and you can see he has his knee thing painted black too. This biker with a melt -a gun he has, uh, his flames on his bike because melt is be hot, yo. Um, I think he was also a part of it. Yeah, oh, yep, 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 yep. There, it is. There's the D right there. All right, he's falling apart. <laughs> For this bike, I only glued down the back wheel and the other parts were snapped to fit so I could make him, I could make him do a wheelie. I could make him do a wheelie like that. Here's one that 100% right off the bat, you can tell. You can tell one thick coat straight out of the pot, not a care in the world. This is a, this is a toasty original paint job right here. Look at that, look at that detailing didn't even try with the shoulder pads to be honest <laughs> this must have been one of the first models i think i ever painted uh gun barrel not drilled of course not why would you <laughs> and yellow to be honest is a difficult color to paint ultramarines have since gone with a blue gold color scheme that i think is like super nice and super cool but there's something nostalgic about the maize and blue here's that sort of rose gold color again that i I really, really like, and I think this might have been a mixed paint. I'm, I think this might have been like red and bronze or something, but on this multi melta it looks like super good. I loved Laz Cannons, dude. 
rocking rocking the double Laz Karen Devastator squad, you could shoot anything off the table. And then of course we got missile launchers riding with the tactical marines. All every squad of tactical marines had a missile launcher because you were allowed to, and of course I did. Here's 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 the the missile launcher painted by my dad. I think I think he did honestly enjoy painting these little dudes. Put the missile in there. You love to see it. You got the lens. You got the eyes. This is obviously not me. <laughs> Less unpainted stuff than I imagined. Uh, we got a librarian here, and his head's all messed up because I tried to add a call to him, a hood, and I think it's again as all mods were back when we were playing, like literally done with Play-Doh. <laughs> it might have been literal Play-Doh. I think what often happened was like. Dad, I can't do the shoulder pads. Can you do the shoulder pads? There we go. Look at that. It's kind of a neat looking staff. Looks looks aged. Looks ancient. I like it. Oh, this one's fun. Chaplain in Terminator armor. Straight up painted the base red with the blood of his enemies. This, this might be like a lictor head uh, or something. <laughs> we got an orc head there. And also on top of his flagpole, which I just snapped off, I was trying to bend it back into position. Chaos Space Marine tied to the top of his flagpole. But this model, I think, was 100% done by me. It's pretty messy, but definitely a cherished figure in the army. Uh, Slayer of Heretic and Xenos alike. This guy was a baller for sure. I made a mistake on his head and I got a, a black splotch on there and I didn't realize for some reason that you could fit some mistakes that didn't occur to me. <laughs> I was like, well, it's there now. And then I left it there. <laughs> this little guy was a dreadnought back in the day. I went ham on the arms, as you can see. I was not satisfied with just the normal yellow and blue. I had to add something a little bit extra. So uh, we have some attempted edge highlighting here. Uh, didn't go so well, <laughs> and then I just added it in random spots. And with the yellow stripes again for some reason. A little bit of attempted freehand as well with the Ultramarine logo. Not the worst attempt in the world, especially compared to the other arm here. Another attempted freehand situation, which didn't go that great, but hey, who cares? <laughs> Classic early toasty career. Double Laz Cannon, twin linked Laz Cannon, always take that. Never take the auto gun. The auto gun, I have it. It's not painted. I have an auto gun, it's not painted. You know why? Because I didn't use it. I used the Laz Cannon every time. There's evidence of a land speeder here, which I did have. Didn't make the move for whatever reason. It's probably just not with the rest of my stuff. I also know that I had a Vindicator tank, uh, which I'm guessing also didn't make the move for whatever reason. Here we have a Vindicare Assassin, one of what I think is still the coolest models in the GW line. I mean, the new one looks really nice too. His arm fell off at multiple points because he's like a heavy gun. And this is pewter too. So he's this heavy gun and it's like pointed up on the model. He's holding it up like this. And it just fell off no matter how many times we tried to super glue it. I stuck some Play-Doh in there, tried to reattach it. It didn't really work, obviously. It's not on him. <laughs> and we also have a Kroot, uh, which I also decapitated to put on the base. This Kroot was a trade I made back in the day. I traded one Kroot, so this is not my paint job, actually. This is, uh, must have been one of my friend's paint jobs. He has a bunch of extra weapons strapped to his back. I'm not sure why or how, <laughs> but he does. And then I cut off his head to put it on my Terminator Chaplain. I was ruthless about this Terminator Chaplain, dude. I wanted representations of every army to have their heads on this guy's base. Let me let me grab one of my recent models just to show you like a little bit of contrast. Uh, to see kind of where we are now with the hobby. So as you may or may not know, I'm currently building the Adeptus Mechanicus. These boys right here. This is a recently painted model painted probably a few months ago and just look at look at the attention to detail that I'm able to give this model it's not perfect by any means love the dust effects the oils and the grease and everything dripping down his cloak 
even just the patterning. That was all freehand. There's text on the purity seals compared to this guy. Maybe the first model I ever painted. This isn't even a Goblin Green base. This is before we had Goblin Green. This, I think this literally came in a painting starter kit. It was like a bunch of paints in like this one uh, missile launcher. So I think there's a pretty high chance that this is the first Warhammer model I ever assembled and painted. And it's really awesome just to like go back and see where we were and how far we've come. You know, I, I still love these Space Marines, absolutely. Just as, just as much as I love this guy that I've painted just a couple of months ago. You know what I mean? As, as, as a, a reintroduction to the hobby with Adeptus Mechanicus, it, it's, it brings me so much joy to physically see the result of all that effort and love that I put into it as a kid. Um, but that is all I have. That's all of my stuff that, that has survived. So thank you for going on this journey with me. Uh, and I hope to make more content like this in the future. I'm going to be doing more with the hobby in the future with, with this army and, um, you know, with a couple of other models. I, I have a new Ultramarines guy coming. Uh, I, bought, I bought one. I bought one Ultramarine recently that I haven't built or painted yet, but I want to make some stuff around him too. Thank you guys again for, for hanging out and following me on this journey. It was a real huge trip down memory lane, and it, it was uh, just a huge treat for me to be able to share that with all of you guys. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Peace.